Your Excellencies, uh, present in this room this afternoon, Madam Executive Secretary of the UNFCCC, Christiana Figueres, uh, President of Mary Robinson Foundation on Climate Justice, I call her Mama Mary <laughs> Robinson. Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the launch of our publication, Tuto Yabatu, Teachings from My People. To the president, the incoming president, or oh, now the president of COP18. You will always be president. <laughs> Your presence here means quite a lot and indeed lives up to the challenge we should all be tackling the seven billion of us with this one challenge resolved to work together on it with all the women of the globe and hence the launch of this publication today, Tuto Yavatu, Teachings from My People. Women adapt to climate change. On this special day that has been declared by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change as Gender Day, so it's not an accident. Thank you for taking time from what will certainly be a very busy two weeks for negotiators of all parties. It is uh, indeed such an honor for me personally that I can mark the year of our presidency as South Africa of COP17 with this book. The book is a testament to ordinary people, especially to women who every day are the face of the climate realities on the ground, while we as negotiators and political leaders are discussing, sometimes with questionable urgency, to find a global response that could address their plight. My term as COP president has ended, but my responsibility as a member of a party to the Convention and Kyoto Protocol, as a citizen of the world, and most importantly, as a woman, will never end. This journey towards climate freedom is a long and odious, and we have many more obstacles to overcome and gains to make. We are taught as Africans and as South Africans with the context of Ubuntu. Ubuntu simply means I am because you are. It's simply spelled U-B-U-N-T-U. We learn through this Ubuntu that each of us has a responsibility to ensure the stability of our continent as well as future generations. Central to this uh, aspiration are women. We've already seen the damage wreaked uh, by climate change, unpredictable weather patterns, uh, desertification, and extreme weather events. We have mourned loved ones lost and in anger assigned blamed. Tuto Yabat, Teachings from My People, is a book of hope. It is filled with inspiration, beginning with messages of hope from the Executive Secretary of the UNFCCC, Madam Christiana Figueres, and the President of the Mary Robinson Foundation on Climate uh, Justice, Mama Mary Robinson, who pushed us, who encouraged us, who do that all the time. I think she really deserves a round of applause. <laughs> who insisted that the three trika, she called us, of presidency of the COP women should leave this legacy that says there is an agreement around the world that women form the majority, females of the population. Uh, Your Excellency Minister, out of your seven billion, the majority are women. Oh. So <laughs> that's the reality. <coughs> uh, both uh, these wonderful ladies stressed the importance of highlighting women's role in climate adaptation. 
not to see women as victims, but as contributors, as not only survivors, but those who know how with their indigenous knowledge system. This book provides hope to those who might have lost hope and given up. This is quite simply a book about heroes. Let me hasten to say, maybe rather about heroines. Tuto Yabatu, it's inspired by the contribution of women from across the continent of Africa who came together during a continental consultative dialogue on the impact of climate change. Again, instruction from Mama Mary. You can host this climate change conference in Africa and you don't have to listen, give yourself an opportunity to listen to African women. We had more than 40 countries represented at that historic conference of women on the continent coming together and coming up with a declaration. I still have a copy of that declaration. I will hand over the copy again to uh, the Secretariat through uh, Madam Christiana so that we continue remembering because checking on what women were calling upon us then, last year, this still remains a reality. That declaration from more than 40 countries, representatives of women in South Africa on the eve of COP17, the COP is here with us. It lives with me because I think it's important that we keep remembering. At that time, through the encouragements of Mama Mary, we also had a meeting on the sidelines of the, of the, uh, of the UN uh, General Assembly where we had to look at declarations from women from other parts of the world and all the regions of the world to say what is it that they expected of us. So this declaration is a set of recommendations and strategies to mitigate the impact of climate change on women. The innovative stories from the tip of the African continent to the shores of Solomon Islands are filled with ingenuity of women. Inspirational stories such as girls being transformed into community leaders in South Africa to the brown, a groundbreaking use of natural chemicals from trees to purify water in Sri Lanka. Women uh, are transformed from being labeled as victims into financiers and farmers, creating networks and building communities. This is a cause for celebration. Looking at adaptation initiatives from around the developing world uh, show that women, as agents of social change, often hold the key. This is something that should be nurtured. As much as women have adapted and proven that uh, they are worth in the developing world, more needs to be done and must be done. This initiative should not end here today. Instead, I hope that each COP president will seek to spread the word of the plight of millions of people that are affected by climate change. Uh, Your Excellency Minister Alatia, yesterday I had a bilateral meeting with my counterpart here in Qatar, who whispered to me that here in Qatar, you might soon have to start a movement called Save the Men campaign, because women are taking over power. I want, I want men to support me. Gender is not a singular idea, <laughs> nor is it limited to women. All are affected, and the contributions of each one is needed in order to overcome the challenge through climate change. Through this initiative, we acknowledge some of the remarkable steps taken by women under very difficult circumstances to deal with the harsh realities of the changing environment. I'm inspired by the courage and leadership of these women, and I'm honored to be able to tell their stories as examples of what women around the world are achieving daily. In my mother tongue, they say, Taucha toka seboka, dishitwa kenare etocha. That is our unity, men and women around the world, seven billion of us, is our strength. This book story is about Moro Rekasireleza Bokamoso. Together we can save tomorrow. As we all join in 
in supporting the president of COP18 that indeed we all are saying, count me in on this global challenge of 7 billion people facing one challenge. Shukran.